Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last few episodes, we learned about how to create a topo surface, either by adding points manually or by importing a CAD file with contour lines. Today in this episode, we are going to talk about building pads. What are they and how do we use them? So let's dive in. So this is where we left off in the last episode. We had imported a CAD file with contour lines, generated a topo surface, set the project base point to the geo reference, by using acquire coordinates and learned about how to use label contours. So if you haven't watched that video out, I really recommend that you do. I've given you the link in the description box. Let's start off from this point onwards. Let's go to the 3D view and decide where we would like to place our building model. Let's say this platter looks quite all right for my building to be placed on. But, this, but before I can place my building on top of this, I want to know what, what is the elevation of these contours. So let's go back to the site plan, use label contours and label these contour lines. My labels are showing my elevation from the project base point. So I can see that this particular contour is 23 meters and it's sloping downwards to 22 meters. I would like to create a level for my building. So let's go ahead and create a section. So I'm going to create a level line somewhere around here and I'm going to make the elevation about 22 meters and I'm going to call this level 22. So this is where I have decided that I would like to place my building but as you can see from this level line that before we place a building on we might need to do a little bit of cutting or filling based on on which base that we would like to place the building on. How do we cut and fill our topo surface? To do this, there is a tool called Building Pad. Building Pad helps to flatten a surface in order to create a base for our building. So let's go ahead in our level 22 floor plan view and create a building pad. Now, creating a building pad is the same process as creating a floor. So you have the same drawing tools, pick lines, pick walls options, so you can use whichever that is relevant for you in your design. I'm going to use a simple straight line tool. I'm going to create a building pad that is about, um, let's say, something like this here. And I'm going to decide on which level it belongs to. For now, I'm going to say that it's going to be at zero elevation, so it's going to be at 22 meters. I'm going to finish that. Let's go to the section. So how you can see that it has flattened the topo surface around that building pad. And in the top of the building pad matches with my level 22 at zero height offset. Let's go ahead and look at this in 3D view. So you can see that it has done some cutting in order to flatten that surface. Let's say if I increase the height offset to about 2 meters, so now the elevation of, of top of the building pad is at 24 meters, it has done some filling around this building pad in order to raise that elevation. Same thing if I do it with minus 2 meters, You'll see how it has dug a hole in order to create that base at 20 meters of elevation. So building pads are quite useful. They cut or fill a topo surface in order to create a flat base for your building model. Another interesting thing that you can do with your building pads is to add slopes. For example, I'm going to select this building pad and edit the boundary of it. Let's go ahead in this floor plan view and choose the slope arrow option. And this time, I'm going to choose a slope arrow from this um, edge to this edge. In this my slope arrow, the height offset, the default level is whatever level at the building pad is situated at. And from this point, I'm going to say it's going to be zero. So it's the same level as my building pad. And from this point onwards, it's sloping down. So level at head, level at the head of my slope arrow is going to be minus two meters, for example. I'm going to finish that. Let's go to the section view to see. So this particular one is the height offset is minus two. So my, I originally created my building pad at 20 meters of elevation. Let's go ahead and check whether it's still at 20. So height offset at tail is zero. So it's going to be the same as 20. And from this point onwards, it's sloping down to minus two meters. Let's go ahead and add a midpoint elevation to this. So this is 18 meters. So, so you can also create building pads that has slopes in them. I want to show you a trick here. 
This building pad is very much similar to creating a floor. So when you want to edit the thickness or material of the building pad, it's also quite similar to creating a floor. So if I go and select my building pad, edit the type and duplicate, I can create a custom building pad type. So if let's go into structure edit. So it's the same edit assembly dialog box that you normally see when you're editing a wall or a floor or a roof or any of these system families in Revit. So here, let's change the thickness to 0.1 and material to let's say concrete. And when I do this, you'll see how the thickness of my building pad and the material has changed and updated to match that um, material that we assigned in the type properties. We can also use this trick in order to make the building pad merge with the topo surface. Merge with the topo surface? Yes. Let's go ahead and select our building pad, edit the type, duplicate, and I'm going to make it a pad which looks very much like earth. And I'm going to give a thickness, a very minimum thickness, let's say 10 millimeters. And I'm going to add the material as earth. And I'm going to say OK to this. And ta-da! No building pad. This is an interesting trick when you're working with site development. Sometimes you want to adjust your topo surface in terms of um, cutting and filling it and adjusting your topo surface to design your site. But you don't want your building pad to be so dominantly visible. So I really like to use this trick to kind of hide that building pad over the topo surface and merge with the same material. So you can select it separately. So I'm going to select this building pad. You can adjust this, for example, I can adjust its elevations. I can adjust its height offsets. I can do whatever I want to do with my building pad, but it still looks like I'm adjusting a topo surface and it's not, not predominantly um, different uh, like a normal building pad would be. So you can use this trick if that helps you. Now we know that building pads can cut and fill a topo surface. At the end of the project, we might want to also get the total quantity of net cut and fill. Can we quantify? Of course, yes. That's the reason why we use building information modeling. In the next episode, we are going to talk about graded region. This, this is a tool using which we can quantify the net cut and fill of the topo surface. So please make sure that you subscribe. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one.